Do you thank God for what he's done? Amen. Amen. He saved my soul, set my spirit free. Amen. We just praise him this morning. Glory to God. Ooh, that stirred me a little bit this morning. Amen. Nothing greater. All right, these are the announcements. Uh, daylight Savings Time begins Saturday at the 9th, so remember to set your clocks forward an hour before you go to bed. And uh, Prime Timers is this Wednesday, uh, March the 6th at 9 o'clock at Famous Anthony's on 460. And, uh, of course, we've been looking for some, uh, a few good women uh, for, um, who will volunteer four to six weeks at a t- every four to six weeks in the children's church during Sunday morning service and you see Sheena Johnson on that and of course we have the adult Sunday school at 9 15 of course Wednesdays we have the Bible studies that are continuing this week uh, uh, come and join us I, I'm getting all confused here men's Bible study we're studying first Peter and women are continuing to, to study on prayer and we have corporate prayer here at six o'clock to 6.45, and uh, we're continuing to lift up uh, and make mention of these uh, in our prayers. Janelle Keaton, Calvin Cox's sister, Sherry, and a man named Charles that's in the Roanoke Memorial Hospital. Jim Johnson, that's Keith's dad. Barbara Miller's brother, Sammy, we're praying for them. All right, there's some more details that are in your bulletin that you can look at. All right, our scripture verse for today comes out of Deuteronomy. Chapter 10, 12 through 22. And this is Moses giving some of the last instructions to Israel before they enter into the promised land. <clears throat> and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all your heart and soul. And you must always obey the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Look, the highest heavens and the earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord your God. Yet the Lord chooses, chose your ancestors as the subject of his love. And he chose you, their descendants, above all other nations, as is evident today. Therefore, change your hearts and stop being stubborn. For the Lord is God For the Lord your God is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, and he is uh, the great God, the mighty and the awesome God, who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. He ensures that the orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to to the foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and worship him and cling to him. Your oaths must be in in his name alone. He alone is your God, the only one who is worthy of praise, the one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. When your ancestors went down to Egypt, there was only 70 of them. But now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to take a few minutes and welcome one another, shake some hands, and we have some visitors and greet them. And... Amen. Good morning. Robin said, are you preaching today or are we just going to talk? That's okay, I'm going to get her back. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. It's good to have you. Uh, today, I think Tuesday, amen, <laughs> good to have you guys. Somebody told me, a little birdie told me Tuesday is Robin and Randy's 36th anniversary. So we're putting Randy on the prayer list, let me see here. <laughs> amen, amen. Hey, George, did you mention, I don't know if I put it on the, the, the breakfast. Okay, the breakfast is on the 16th, which is Saturday after this one coming up. Men's breakfast. And um, 
I know the women made a big deal about trying to have more than us at the women's soup and salad or whatever. What's that called? Soup and sisters. <laughs> I was just picking on them. So they had 21, and we had 22. And so, you know, it was very close. It was very close, so I Googled it, and it said 22 is greater than 21. And so... Anyway, because it was close and, and all that, so I'm going <laughs> to encourage the guys to come to the next one because I, I know now it's on. <laughs> but anyway, um, and there were a few ladies that were sick and all, I know that. And, but um, we just encourage you guys to come out on the 16th uh, for the breakfast. starts here at 8, it's about an hour and a half, something like that, and um, we eat and then we usually have somebody, somebody teach a lesson or a testimony or something. So, like to see you guys here. Hey, John, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> there's a map in there. You see it? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not a local map. Um, the title of the message is Blueprint for Victory. I mean, we're, it's going to be probably two weeks. I thought it was going to be one, but it's going to be two. So, why don't we pray for this and see what uh, see what happens? Amen. Father, we just thank you for today. Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning to us. Lord, we woke up this morning, and Lord, that means that you've given us another day for some reason, and that reason is to glorify you, to make your your name known to those around us, Lord. So, Father, we just ask that I ask, Lord, once again in this message, Lord, I I I pray that you work in it, Lord. Um, I've done the study. Now, Lord, it's I just pray that you would use it as you desire, Lord, that it would be you and not me, and Lord, that you would use what's in here, Father, to glorify your name and to magnify the name of Jesus, and Father, that when we leave here today, we'll glean something from your word that we can hook onto and attach, Lord, and go with this week. So, Lord, that's what we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, a blueprint for victory. Um, this story is a historical account of an, and an illustration of a spiritual lesson, okay? So I want you to put yourselves in the place of the person we're going to talk about here and, um, and just put yourself in there. Be that person. We're going to look at Second Chronicles. We're going to go through from 17 to 20, but today we're going to go through mostly 17 through 19 of Second Chronicles uh, not all of it. I'm going to hit some highlights. And then next week, we're going to end in chapter 20. Okay? So let me give you some background. And John, if you can put that map up there, give you a little background. This is about 850 years, give or take, before Jesus is born. Okay? So you remember when Israel asked for, for kings? Remember when Samuel came? Remember the people said, we want a king over us like the other nations. And and Samuel came and he said, look, you don't want a king. God is your king. When they came out of Egypt, that was the situation. He was going to be their king. They were supposed to be different than the nations around them. But they, they cried, we want a king. We want a king, right? So what happened is God said, okay. The first king was who? Saul, right? After that, David and Solomon. So what happens is the kingdom is one kingdom at one point. But now after Solomon, the kingdom split. And the reason it split, and here's what Samuel had told uh, Israel when they wanted a king. He said, they're going to take your They're going to take your sons and give them chariots and horses and put them in war. They're going to take your women and they're going to make them servants and and all that. And they're going to tax your land. They're going to take part of what you have from you. And they said, no, we want a king. We want a king. So what happened was the kingdom split, right? So now we have two kingdoms. We have Judah in the south and Israel in the north. Israel is ten of the tribes, right? And Judah is two of the tribes. Now, I have some dots here. There's a blue dot there. i got too much caffeine in me. Hold up. <laughs> There's a blue dot there and a blue dot there and a red dot there. They're going to be important here. That's Samaria in the northern kingdom, who Ahab is, is the king of, and Jerusalem, of course, in the southern kingdom, who's Jehoshaphat. And this is the area that is, they're going to talk about in this, cha- in this section 
wanting to attack it. <clears throat> Ahab does. <clears throat> so that's where we are. So we want to go to Second Chronicles <clears throat> chapter 17. Now there were 19 kings of Israel. 19 kings. In, well, it's, it's, we don't need any more, John. <laughs> 19 kings in the northern kingdom. All of them were evil. Every one of them was evil, right? There were 20 kings in the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. Out of that 20, 12 of them were evil. So of all these kings, only eight kings uh, were good kings. We're going to talk about a good king. <laughs> Sorry, keep looking back. Um, we're going to talk about a good king, Jehoshaphat, right? And a bad king, Ahab. I'm sure those names sound familiar to you. Um, and so let's look at that. It's going to start in chapter 17, and it says this. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, now he was a, uh, his dad had, had died, and so he's taken over now. And it says, then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. Now you notice he's strengthening himself against the northern kingdom, right? The other ten tribes. He didn't want to be attacked by them. They were actually away from the Lord. And it says this, he strengthened himself against Israel and he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. Now listen to this. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, false gods, right? But sought the God of his fathers. So he's, come, he's seeking the Lord. He would be the equivalent of us today, right? A believer in Christ, a believer in God, right? And it says, he sought the God of his fathers and walked in his commandments. So here we have evidence. Yeah, he was seeking after the Lord, and the evidence was he was walking in the commandments that God had given him. So his testimony was good and not according to the acts of Israel, right? The northern kingdom. And it says this in verse 6, and his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. So now he loves the Lord. He's seeking his commandments. He's put away the, he doesn't follow Baal or anything. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. You know what the word says? It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart, amen? He'll give you if, you if you delight in him. And But if you delight in him, the desires of your heart will change to what he wants them to be, not what we want them to be. And it's better for us, isn't it? Believe me. <clears throat> and it says this, And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. He removed the high places and wooden images, just like us as Christians, right? We remove those, those idols. We remove those high places of the world had in us before we came to the Lord. So he's doing all the things he needs to do. He's a good king. His heart's towards the Lord. He follows his commandments. He's removed all the stuff out of his area of responsibility that's in conflict with God. And he has a heart for God. And it says this in verse 10. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land that were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Remember, what's the word say? He'll make even his enemies to be at peace with you. He'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land and they were, that were around Judah so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Also, some of the Philistines, now you know the Philistines, they're on the west Gaza, right? They're the enemies, brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver as tribute, and the Arabians, that's south, right? Brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful, Increasingly, he's blessed by God, isn't he? He has a heart for God. He's following after God. He's doing all the right things. And God's protecting him. God's keeping him. And he became very powerful. 
But then we go to chapter 18. And there's going to be a little bit of a change here. In verse 1, it says this. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. There was nothing else he really needed. Riches and honor in abundance. But here comes the compromise. And by marriage, he allied himself, aligned himself with Ahab. So what happened was his son married Ahab's daughter. So who's the, his, his son's mother-in-law now? Jezebel. She sound familiar? Jezebel. Mm. Bad news. Ahab and Jezebel. So what happened here is Jehoshaphat, God had promised the kingdom. The kingdom should have been completely under Jehoshaphat. But because of what had gone on, it was split, right? So he had made defenses against the, the northern kingdom because Ahab is evil. But now he joins in into an alliance with him by marriage. So what he did is he compromised, and he wasn't obedient to God's leading. He didn't need to have that alliance with Ahab. He didn't need that. And you know, for us, we can never compromise to get the things that God has already promised us. He's already promised us, okay? The land belonged to one kingdom, the kingdom of David. David was from, the, from Judah, kingdom of Judah, right? But never compromise to try to get the things that God's already planned for you to have, but you're trying to get them by compromise and by your own way. And we can all do that, right? We can all be impatient, you know, in relationships and, and things that we're trying to attain in, in life, you know, even our jobs, our occupations and all that. God's able to provide all that as we, as Jehoshaphat did, as we seek after him, put him first and put feet to our words, feet to our words. And it says, after some years, so the kids got married, right? After some years, it says this. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. So even though it's north, we talked about that before, from Jerusalem, it's down, downhill. And it says, <clears throat> and Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him and the people who were with him and persuaded him, persuaded him, to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go up with me against Ramoth Gilead? Ramoth Gilead was a land, that, that red spot I showed you, that he wants to go up and, and fight for, that land, that area up there. It's already part of the promised land. Jehoshaphat already had, if the kingdom had stayed together, it was already part of the God's promised land. It was theirs anyway. But here's this evil king trying to get this godly king to go up and fight for something that God already promised to him anyway. And he answered him, and he said, I am as you are, and my people is your people. We will be with you in war. Uh-oh. Now it's a problem, isn't it? Now it's a problem. But here's a little good part coming. Is, yes, but, he says in the next verse, verse 4, also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Amen. Hey, let's ask God. You know, oh yeah, we'll go up, let's go. Well, wait a minute. Hey, why don't we ask God? I'm a Christian. I'm getting into this uh, relationship with somebody that isn't. Let's ask God what he wants, what he wants to do. And, and, and seek after him. So it says here in verse 5, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, this is Ahab, 400 men, and said to them, shall we go to war with Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? So they said, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. These are all false prophets, aren't they? Every one is a false prophet. They're not even, they might even be prophets of Baal or something. It doesn't really specify. But these, this is the world. This is the world's advice. This is why we have to be careful not to seek counsel from ungodly people. Oh, it'll be okay. Just do it. God will forgive you. Yeah, go on. 
Don't seek advice from un ungodly people from the world. Uh, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here? Is there not that we may inquire of him? Is there not one prophet of the Lord that we can ask? <laughs> so the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I hate the dude. He won't let me do anything I want. Everything that I think of, he says, no, God says don't do it. The main thing is Ahab was out of God's will totally anyway. Every time he came to the prophet, the prophet, of course, is not going to give him good news. But he says, I may, may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. Always evil. Ahab had a hard heart, a heart that had been hardened over the years. And I'm just going to say this, and it's the same for me. I don't ever want to despise godly counsel. You know, if somebody comes to you and they love you, you know, the word says, speak the truth in love. If you see a brother or a sister caught in sin, you who are spiritual, go to them. Being careful of yourself, right? Not with pride. Hey, bro, you got to straighten up. No, you go to them with humility. Hey, brother, I'm just going to encourage you. You can't do that. You can't do that, okay? I know how you feel. I've been there. I, I've, I know what, how the world is. But let me just encourage you, you can't live that life and still seek after God. So Ahab has a hard heart. He's despising godly counsel. But you know what? God's still giving it to him, isn't he? He gives counsel to the ungodly until their heart is so hard that he gives them what they want, like Pharaoh, right? He says, but I hate him because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such things. Hey, man, don't talk about the prophet of God. You can already see the disrespect that Ahab has for a true prophet, for a man of God, you know. He says, don't let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called one of his officers and said, bring Micaiah, the son of Imlah, quickly. The king of it, now here's the deal, they're in Samaria. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, clothed in their robes, sat each on his throne, and they sat at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gates, gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. All these pro false prophets now Zedekiah, the son of Chenina, had made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus says the Lord. This dude's speaking for the Lord. Hey, thus says the Lord. Be careful when somebody says to you, Hey, the Lord told me. Or thus says the Lord. Just be careful that you're a Berean and you check that and make sure that that really is something the Lord has given them for you, right? But I like this. He says, he made horns of iron for himself. And he says, thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. So he makes these horns, and I'm sure he's going, you're going to gore them until they're destroyed, right? He had all these props, right? The more props you have sometimes, maybe, maybe what your word is isn't quite what it should be. Amen? You know, I was watching something, I think I told some, I, I know Pam knows, watching a video on YouTube of a church service for Super Bowl Sunday. And this service was huge. The church was huge. Uh, I mean, it was probably five, ten thousand 10,000 people there. I don't know where it was. But the pastor was dressed like an like a umpire, referee, right? And his associate pastor, and, and they all had jerseys on and on, like, hey, Super Bowl Sunday! It's church. It's church, right? Super Bowl Sunday, we're going to do this. Here's what it ends up. They take a Bible, and they say, yeah, it's like the football. Who's going to kick a field goal? And the pastor is standing there, and he's got goal posts, and they hike the Bible to, the, to the, uh, the wife of the pastor or something. She holds it down like this, and he kicks it through the goal posts. A Bible. Huh. And I thought to myself, Look, it doesn't matter what your church has. I don't care if you have smoke machines and light shows and all that. that. 
you know, there's not this, but don't let that determine what this says. Don't let that fool you into believing somebody up there teaching a false message because, oh, man, they really have good, good stuff here. I mean, this is really neat. And, but then when you hear and when you discern the word and you say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right what they're preaching. It can be either way. You can have a big church and have a really good uh, pastors who teach in the word. It doesn't matter. You can have small churches like us that can be wacky. Right? You can have pastors that are, that are out there. Don't say nothing, Gary. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the, what do you call it, the trappings are. Right? It, this is what it's about. What does this say? And I don't care if you have a light on it or you don't have a light on it or smoke or not smoke or whatever. But when I saw that, it, it broke my heart to see them kicking a Bible, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He's the Word, the eternal Word. God said, I've elevated my Word above my name. You're going to kick it through a goalpost on a church service? Anyway, this guy makes these horns, right, to prove a point. Oh, we're right. You're going to do this. You shall go gore the Syrians until they're destroyed. And all the prophets... All the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hands. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah, whatever his name is, spoke to him, saying, Now here, he's bringing them in, right? All these people, go up, go up, 400 prophets. It's a big to-do going on, right? And he's bringing them in. And he says in verse 12, Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. They're encouraging the king. Therefore, please, please, let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. Encouragement. Look, if you ever have somebody that always speaks encouragement and you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, that's not good. It's not, if, if I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, I don't want you encouraging me. Hey, Jimmy, good job. That false thing you said, that's all right, but you're pretty good. No, I want you to say, hey, brother, what, what did you say? What was that? And it's the same with us. We don't want to encourage somebody to go into the path that's going to kill them. And be detrimental to them. We always have to speak the truth in love. Speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, whatever my God says, that I will speak. Same with us. What did the disciples say when they were, hey, don't speak in his name. And they went and said, whether it's right to speak, we're going to obey the Lord. You know, we don't care. We don't care what the, what can men do to us? Do not fear him who can kill the body, but fear him who can kill the body and cast the soul into hell. That's what the word says. Anyway, as the Lord lives, whatever my God says, that will I speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or sure, should, shall I refrain? And he's mocking him here, isn't he? Because he's heard all this, and he's, the guy's saying, don't say, and he says, go and prosper, they shall be delivered into your hands. But he said it in a way, I'm sure, that the king was like, okay, he's mocking me, right? So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel. I saw all Israel. Sitting, I'm, I'm sorry, he said, um, how many times? And he said, I saw all Israel, verse 16, scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. You know what he said? He said, you're going to be killed. You're the shepherd. You're the one in charge of these guys, this army. You're going to be killed, and all your soldiers are going to be scattered on the mountains. 
And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you he would prophesy, would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? He's so hard that even when he gets a warning sign, he doesn't believe it. Then Micaiah said this, I just find this astounding. Just look at this. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. God opened up the heavens for him to have that vision of seeing the multitude of angels and all before the throne, right? Sitting on his throne, the host of heaven standing on his right hand and his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab, king of Israel, to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in another manner, in that manner. Then a spirit, an evil spirit, then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, probably Satan, and said, I'll persuade him. I'll persuade him. The Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. See, he showed him that when the guy had come to get him before he even heard about all the prophets prophesying good, right? I'll persuade him. I will go out and, he will, and, and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do it. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. He's got some nerve, doesn't he? Hope he had a concealed carry permit. He could have taken a few of them out, but God's protecting him. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. The Lord has declared disaster against you. Verse 26. Then the king of Israel said, <laughs> Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison. Put this fellow in prison and feed him the, with the bread of affliction and the water of affliction until I return in peace. That's, that's sometimes what happens when you speak the word. You're gonna, in the world, you'll have tribulation, right? This is an affront to the world. Jesus said, they're not, against, they're not against you, they're against me. They don't hate you, they hate me. But he said that. Until, and then he said, put this fellow in prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and water of affliction until I return in peace. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. But Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken to me. And he said to the people there, he said, the Lord's not spoken to me. Take heed, all you people. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? And it says this in uh, 28. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. A little bit of a decoy there, isn't it? See, I think Ahab really was a little worried about what was going to happen. So he said, I'm going to disguise myself like one of the soldiers, right? Not looking any different. But hey, Jehoshaphat, why don't you put on your kingly robes? So when the army comes, who are they going to shoot, for, shoot at first, right? Of course, it's going to be the king. It's going to be the officer. It's going to be the general, you know. But Jehoshaphat does it. We can do some stupid things, can't we? And God still protects us. <laughs> Amen. How many times have you done something, you look back and think, Lord, thank you. I don't know what I was thinking, you know. But here, Jehoshaphat agrees to do it. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the... Now this is from God. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots who were with him saying, fight no one, small or great, but only with the king of Israel. God wasn't going to allow a bunch of folks to die. There was a mission here. He said, hey, look, only the king of Israel, right? 
So it was when the captain of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat with all of his regal robes on, um, and they said, it is the king of Israel. They, you know, they mistaken him for Ahab. Therefore they surrounded him to attack, but Jehoshaphat cried out, I've been there, haven't you? Oh, Lord, oh, what, did I do? what am I doing here? Why did I do this? And the, Lord, and the Lord helped him. Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God diverted them from him. We don't even know the times God's diverted the enemy from us because of us doing something dumb. Amen? How many times have... Uh, I don't even... I don't even... You know, I think we need, like I said before, the reason we remember how we were is to remember how much he's forgiven us. Amen? It's not a burden or anything. You look back and you say, thank you, Lord. That's why Abraham built altars. Thank you. Oh, look, sometimes, like I said before, I go down the road and I'll be thinking and I'll remember things, you know, my life, even as a Christian, and think, oh, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you, you know? And that's what happened here. So, that, so it says here, <clears throat> And so it was when the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random. It ain't random. Amen? God's going, okay, here's where it's going to go. He, he sh shoots an arrow at random, randomly, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. The dude's got armor and everything on. Oh, yeah, I'm coming back, but I'm going to armor up. I'm going to make sure, because that, that uh, prophet might have been right. I don't know. Between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up on his chariot, facing the Syrians, until evening, and about the time of sunset, he died. He died. In chapter 9, Randy, you want to you wanna come up? Randy's just going to finish off here. In chapter 19, we're going to end with these few verses this week, and then we're going to go into chapter 20 next week, which is really what is really good. Re read ahead, chapter 20. Not now, though. Chapter 19, Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. So he made it home safe. He's out. He's made a pact with the enemy. He realizes, oh man, he was scared there. He almost got killed. He compromised. He wasn't obedient. But God was gracious and brought him back like he's done with us so many times. Amen. And then it ends with that. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, he's not out of the woods yet. He's going to get yelled at here. The son of Hanani, the seer, the prophet, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of God is upon you. God's angry with you, Jehoshaphat. He's angry for what you did. Nevertheless, I love that word, nevertheless, good things are found in you in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek God. So he was rebuked and then he was restored. He was back from his backsliding. So just a couple of things, just three little, three or four little points here real quick. Jehoshaphat desired to please God, just like we do. I mean, we want to please God, right? We want to please him. He fortified the cities, right? He had defenses against the enemy, he fortified the cities for a frontal attack, but it wasn't a frontal attack. That's how the enemy, maybe once in a while he'll do a frontal attack, but most of the time it's something where he's trying to get you to compromise, trying to get us to, look, how much truth is in 95% truth and 5% lie? None, right? It's deception. He's the deceiver. So he had, he had readied himself against, you know, like us, okay, I'm, you know, I'm keeping my eyes open for anything Satan. But then something happens where we compromise. And we have a subtle attack. The third thing I, I realize in this is he ignored the prophet that came, the one godly prophet. He still went with Ahab, didn't he? 
he still went to war. And I think when he got back home here, he realizes, I better be very careful. And I sure don't want to do that again. But what we're going to see next week, we're going to see what I believe, I believe is a little bit of a repercussion for what happened in these chapters. But I'm telling you, chapter 20, there is so much in there about corporate prayer, consistent prayer, and the ladies are studying prayer. Look, read chapter 20, and we'll go over it next week. There's so much in there. There's such a template there that we want to look at. Amen? Father, we thank you for today. Lord, I just thank you for your word, and I pray, Lord, that we would glean something from it, Lord, practically, spiritually and practically, Lord, that we would glean something from it. And Father, I just pray for those that are here today that you would, Lord, that you would just work in their lives, in my life, Lord. Help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to be more like you, Lord. And Father, I just pray that you would be glorified in us. And Lord, that you would bring us back next week, Lord, and that everything that's done in this place will be done to glorify you and to honor you. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name.